What's up guys, welcome back to DCS World and of course my tutorial series for the A10C Warthog. As you can see we are currently in a flying airplane right now. Uh, just cruising along here in the Caucasus map at about 15,000 feet. And today I just wanted to talk a little bit about just generally how to fly the airplane, how to make it do what you want it to do and how to avoid making it do things you don't want to do. The A-10 isn't exactly a fast bird as you can see by my airspeed right here. I'm at full throttle and I'm only managing to do about 238 knots or so, it's still speeding up. Uh, but no, the A-10C is not fast. Uh, it is far from it. And it, you know, in that sense it is no it's no fighter aircraft, it's no F-16, it's no Hornet, it's not going to pull ridiculous G's, it's not going to do 600 knots on the deck, it's, it's not designed for that. But it's not exactly a slouch either. It's actually a pretty nimble plane, and to make things even more challenging for myself to demonstrate, I've got some weapons actually on the wings that are going to make these demonstrations just a little bit harder and a little bit more realistic. I've got a realistic loadout of a few Mavericks and a few uh, CBU-105 cluster bombs. Uh, more on employing those weapons in a later video. But uh, the purpose of this video is just general flying tips. Uh, like I said, the A-10 can be pretty nimble if you know how to fly it right. There is no fly-by-wire system in this airplane, unlike things like the Hornet or the Mirage. Uh, this airplane has nothing protecting you from basically just spiraling it out of control if you do something it doesn't like. Uh, but with that said, I just want to briefly talk about uh, just generally flying the plane. So I'm currently cruising here with the autopilot on, like I said, 15,000 feet, we're just kind of cruising. Uh, I'm going to kill the autopilot here. Do a little down trim, and I'm just going to go into a nice gentle turn. Keeping the velocity vector on the horizon line. Keep, keep your eyes on the HUD. And this is a gentle turn. This is pretty standard, what you would do in an A-10. Basically a standard rate turn. It's actually pretty steep, and we're turning pretty well. And if you look above my airspeed on the HUD, in fact, let me just pause for a moment. This number here, I briefly touched on it in my HUD uh, introduction video. Uh, this is our G-meter. It's actually a repeat of the G-meter up here. This tells us how many Gs we're pulling in this airplane. So for a level turn right here at this bank angle, we're pulling about 1.3 Gs there, 1.1 even, it's slowing down. If I steepen the bank angle and have to apply more back stick to keep us level, you can see we're pulling almost two G's there. And the airplane's doing it just fine. And if you look down at the ground, a little hard to see because of the sun angle right here, but we're actually turning a pretty tight circle. So let me just level back out here. Get our airspeed back a little bit. And I'll make a turn to the other side. Bank and the wings have to pull back on the stick to keep that path vector on the horizon. I'm actually doing a poor job of it right now, but uh, we'll see if we can get it nice and level. Pulling about 1.8, 1.9, almost two Gs in this turn. And this is quite a sharp turn, actually. You'd be surprised how well the A-10 can actually turn in level flight. Okay, let's roll it out level again and get our airspeed back up. One thing you will notice when you're turning tightly, you will lose airspeed and you will lose airspeed fast. The A-10's engines are not powerful and they cannot overpower a sustained turn like that. So you will bleed off your energy very quickly and you could run the risk of stalling if you're not careful. That being said, let's actually talk about this airplane's stall characteristics. 
it will start to scream at you if your airspeed and level flight drops below about 160 knots. Uh, that usually it starts signaling the uh, gear warning uh, because it thinks you're trying to land, that your landing gear is up. That's obviously not what you're going to do. Uh, the airplane's stall speed in a clean configuration, that is flaps up and gear up, with stores on is around 130-ish to 140-ish knots. Let's see if I can demonstrate that here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the throttles back to idle. Okay, so my throttle is at idle right now. I'm slowly introducing back stick to keep the airplane level. The airplane's nose wants to dip down as the speed decreases. Falling below 200 knots. Still falling. I'm just continuously slowly introducing back stick. You can see my nose ri uh, rising up. You can see the horizon starting to dip below our view. 160 knots, the gear warning should come on here any second. More and more back stick to keep it level. Continuous back stick. And that stall warning, there it is. Stall warning, and we're stalling. Stall recovery, pitch down. Full throttle, gain some airspeed back, and slowly pitch back up to level flight. But that's a level flight, unaccelerated stall. Another easy way that you can stall this airplane is actually in a turn at full power, trying to turn really fast and really hard and really tight. You can stall the airplane. This is called an accelerated stall. So let me see if I can demonstrate that for you here. I'm going to get into a nice tight turn, which means I need to introduce a lot of back stick while turning. You can see it here, the stall horn coming on already, and we're not even near that stall speed we were at before. We're right on the edge of it, right on the edge of it, and ooh, we stalled. Boom. So that's, that's an example of an accelerated stall, and it's really easy to do in the hog, especially when you have stores on the wings, so weapons loaded, and you're trying to make a very, very tight turn. So it really becomes a feel. It's a, it's a very much a feel thing for how hard you can push it before the airplane's wings are just going to kind of give up and you're going to lose control. Let me just gain a little bit more altitude here, climbing up. Uh, just, you know, it's things you need to be aware of. The airplane has big, fat wings, as you can see there. It's got big, fat ailerons on those big, fat wings. So it's, it's definitely, it can, be it can be nimble, you know. I'm just banking back and forth here, and the airplane is banking and rolling quite quickly. It's got big elevators and a big old tail right there, a twin, basically a twin rudder. So it's got big control surfaces. This airplane will maneuver, and it will maneuver fairly well if you know how to handle it. Let's just keep climbing up here again a little bit. And in general, flying this thing Pretty much as with any airplane, um, I draw upon real-world experience myself. As uh, I'm a, uh, I am a uh, general aviation pilot in real life. So I mean, I draw on a lot of real-world experience for how to fly this thing, and I can tell you uh, without a shadow of a doubt that the trick to flying this thing well is keeping your inputs smooth, deliberate not overcorrecting, and when you're trying to fly to a specific point or do a specific thing such as landing, small corrections to the airplane and its attitude, its heading, its position, its pitch, etc. are key. You don't want to 
do things like this, pull up really hard. You can see I actually stalled it there briefly. You don't want to have to roll it real quickly this way, unless you absolutely have to. Roll it back the other way, etc. You don't want to do big, abrupt, jerky movements like that, okay? There are instances where you will push the airplane to its absolute limit in combat situations, and quite frankly, that's going to be normal. But you'll learn how to do that as you spend some time in the seat, flying the airplane, just getting a feel for how it controls, how it reacts to different inputs, and just learning and feeling and hearing how it behaves. So in DCS, we don't have the sort of butt feel, seat of the pants feel that you would have in a real airplane. You're not gonna feel the G-forces, obviously. You're not gonna feel the lateral Gs that might happen from you know, yaw movements like this. You're not gonna feel the negative G if you push forward on the nose like this. You're not gonna feel the high Gs when you pull up. What you will do is you will hear the sounds that the airplane makes when you're doing maneuvers like this. So if I get into one of these tight turns, let's try to keep it level. There's the stall horn. And that's one of the signals you'll use to know when you're right on the limit. So the stall horn comes on in this airplane basically right at a certain angle of attack that's right on the limit of this airplane stalling. Now, getting into the characteristics of how airplanes stall and with regards to wings and angle of attack is a bit beyond the scope of this video. Um, if, uh, if you like, I can actually make a video that's explaining angle of attack and how it relates to how airplanes fly, how they stall, and the idea of the critical angle of attack. Uh, I can certainly do that. So let me know if you want to see that. But again, just to reiterate, the key here is smooth but deliberate control inputs small corrections when you're trying to hit specific points such as landing or flying towards a waypoint or a steer point and perhaps most importantly I want to talk about trim now the A10 has an electronic trimmer it's a hat switch that's normally located on the stick and it can trim in four ways it can trim your ailerons so you know trimming your bank angle and it can trim your elevators up and down, okay? And now what that's gonna allow you to do is, for example, right now, my hands are off the controls and the airplane is doing, it's mostly flying straight and level because I have it trimmed that way. However, let's say I screw the trim up a little bit. Let's say I reset it to takeoff trim in the air, okay? I'm actually having to wrestle a little bit here. If I now take my hands off the controls, what's the airplane doing? You see the path vector climbing above the horizon? The trim is not set for level flight now. The airplane wants to climb, and in this case, because of a slightly asymmetric loadout, it wants to bank to the right. So in order to correct that, I'm gonna first level the plane on the horizon neutralize the stick and just introduce a little bit of forward trim to bring that path vector in line and a little bit of left down aileron trim to keep the wings level okay and keep in mind you will be trimming and retrimming this aircraft constantly okay this airplane is not going to trim itself as in say a hornet it's all on you so you're going to be trimming and constantly retrimming this airplane to fly straight and level and the trim is going to be ex especially important for things like landing for um, 
probably the granddaddy of all uh, all precision maneuvers that you're going to do in an airplane, mid-air refueling. Oh boy, what a nightmare that is. I'll probably do a whole video on that, but I need to get good at it myself in this airplane, so uh, that'll come probably much later. But just bear in mind that to make all of those things a lot easier, the trim is your friend. You're going to use the trim a lot. Uh, here's an example of where trim is going to be very important. So I'm at 16,800 feet right now in level flight doing 340 knots. Let's say I sort of roll into a dive here. So I'm just going to bring the nose down. I've still got full throttle on the engines. Notice my airspeed climbing. 260, 270, 280. When it's about 300 knots, I'm going to pull up into level flight. Okay, 300 knots, pulling up. There's level flight. Hands off the stick. The airplane wants to keep pitching up. Why is that? The way trim works is you trim to maintain an airspeed. You don't trim to maintain a pitch angle or a roll angle. Well, in the case of the aileron trim, you sort of do, but... For all intents and purposes, you trim to maintain an airspeed. So if I'm perfectly trimmed, I'm not speeding up or slowing down. Let's say I'm maintaining exactly 250 knots as an example. I'm not doing 250 now, but let's just say I was doing 250 knots. Perfectly level flight here at 14,000 feet. Perfectly trimmed. I can take my hands off the stick and the airplane is going to just keep flying straight, keep flying level. If I were to slow the airplane to 220 knots, the airplane is going to pitch its nose down. Why does it do that? Because the airplane was previously trimmed for 250 knots. What the airplane is going to try to do is it's going to try to find that equilibrium again. It is going to pitch the nose down to try to regain the speed of around 250 knots. Same thing as if I were to punch the throttles to full and speed up to 270 knots, the airplane is going to then pitch up. Why does it pitch up? Because it was trimmed for 250 knots. I'm now going faster than 250 knots. It's going to pitch up in an attempt to reduce its airspeed and regain that equilibrium. And that's, that's just all the physics of how the airplane works and how airplanes in general work that you can trim. Okay? Uh, that's basically all I wanted to touch on. Um, general, like I said, just some general flying tips for you. My best advice is get in the airplane, get in the air, fly it around, do some maneuvers, do some really steep turns. You could even go as far as to do something as silly as, let's see, I've got, I'm at 14,000 feet. Let's see if I can do a split S. You can do maneuvers like this in this airplane if you do them right. So split S, we're going to go full aileron, invert, pull up on the stick, throttle, throttle back, just on the edge of stalling, just on the edge of stall, pulling some G's there, leveling out, back on the throttles. There we go. I just did a split S, which is you basically flip inverted and then pull up in sort of an inverted Immelman turn sort of thing. And now we're flying again straight and level. The A-10 can do all of this stuff. It can even do a full-on loop if you're... Usually, if you don't have any stores on, it can do it. And you can do things like full-on aileron rolls. The airplane will do them. Snap, roll, and turn. Very deliberate movements. And again, that's the, that's the aim of the game with flying this thing. Deliberate movements, smooth movements, and small corrections when you're trying to hit a specific point. All right? Get in the airplane, guys, and practice. Fly it around. That's the best advice I can give you. Have fun out there, and I'll see you next time. We're going to probably start talking about sensors. So until then, have a good one.